Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome at the technical forum at the group exhibit Hydrogen, Fuel Cells and Batteries in the year of 2015 here at the uh, fairground in Hanover. Every 15 minutes you will hear presentations regarding the hydrogen industry. For that, I invite you to all to have a seat and also have some drinks. They are all on the house. Our next topic will be membranes for water electrolysis and for flow batteries. And for that, not as in the program, we'll have a different speaker here. We'll have Mr. Thomas Crickpera, Senior Manager and Quality Control Electrochemistry. Thank you. Hello, dear ladies and gentlemen. Um, first of all, please let me apologize our managing director, Mr. Bauer, because he has some urgent meeting and he cannot attend then. Uh, today, the title Membranes for Water Electrolysis and Flow Batteries uh, is clear enough what it will be about. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce Fumatech as part of the BWT group. Then I will talk briefly about the decision in participation at energy storage and other energy related methods and uh, don't don't please feel too depressed when this part is over <laughs> uh, then uh, briefly I will discuss the membranes for water electrolysis and one 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 <laughs> um, one uh, durability profile will be shown and at the end I will talk about the membranes for battery systems um, Fumatech is an integral part of BWT Group, and BWT Group it is one of the leading group in Europe when it comes to water treatment. Um, when you look at the map, you can see what is the uh, what is the where the areas of highly polluted or better to say overexploited water are. When we look at North America, when we look at North Africa, uh, Persian Gulf, part of Europe, significant part of India significant part of China and part of Japan, uh, those sources are simply overexploited. Uh, what does it mean and why it is like that? Uh, since about 1900, the consumption of water has been, has risen sixfold and uh, in next 20 years it will be yet doubled. That means in about 150 years there will be roughly 12 times higher consumption of water than it was at the beginning of the century. Um, the crises that are related to the, to the lack of water are affecting recently even the most developed countries, not like it was before, uh, let me say the developing, but uh, when you look at California, there is actually every year some regular draft, but step by step it is getting worse and worse over the last five years. And uh, to my best understanding, uh, recently the situation is there already quite unpleasant. Um, we have concluded that the availability of water, which is clean enough, could limit the development of economy regardless the region. So regardless if you are in USA, Europe or in, in Japan, the water might become one day a really critical factor. And second, uh, our conclusion is that a smaller innovative decentralized system of water treatment will become possibly standard and it will probably somehow leave the footprint in the, in the regulation and lawmakers' actions. Um, okay, when we said so, what, uh, what it could mean further? Uh, very likely more energy will be necessary if there is not enough of clean water which might happen and which is actually logical and our conclusion was that reduction of CO2 foot footprint and higher utilization of produced energy are somehow linked with uh, the let me say renewable energies and energy which has to be spent for water generation. Uh, those two reasons has triggered the interest at Fumatech uh, regarding the energy related uh, components about 15 years ago. Um, recently Fumatech actively follows the power to gas pass concept of energy and uh, we are very active uh, at the energy storage concept uh, which concerns the batteries. Uh, our vision is that the utilization and development of our key components 
that contributes to both water treatment and energy storage conversion should further improve our position on the market. Um, our key competence is development and production of membranes plus increasing their value by action like catalyst coated membrane for electrolysis or building membrane electrode assembly mostly for the water treatment. Uh, when we take a brief look at portfolio of Fumatec membranes uh, by uh, some colleagues from North America, we are called a drugstore of the membranes. Simply you come and you take and pick uh, what you need for your, uh, for your application. Uh, we go through low temperature painful stationary for the automotive application. Uh, we are active on high temperature PEM uh, uh, field, of course DMFC, but recently we noticed that DMFC has uh, experienced some slowdown being overrolled by, by batteries. Uh, significant part, and what I will be talking today about, is PEM water electrolysis. Then there is a new product in our portfolio, alkaline water electrolysis membrane. Uh, we deal in a small portion also with uh, alkaline exchange membrane for the alkaline fuel cells and redox flow batteries. Uh, regarding uh, water electrolysis membrane, the specification is clear enough. We have to offer membrane of low resistance, of really good mechanical properties, and low hydrogen permeation. Uh, these three parameters uh, forced us actually to develop reinforced membranes where I do believe we belong, at least in Europe, to top ones. Uh, the typical thickness of the membrane ranges from 75 to 250 microns, uh, which is depending, depending on the application. And uh, clear enough, the higher pressure, the higher pressure difference is required the thicker membrane. Uh, all the membranes I will be talking about or I, that will be demonstrated are utilized for the production of our own CCM called Fumea, but uh, basically all of them are free commercial available and as soon there is, there is some customer for reasonable volumes of our membrane, we are ready to abandon the CCM production. Um, when we look at the typical performance of our water electrolysis membrane, we can find that, uh, or we can look that compared to the non-reinforced one, we can offer low dimensional swelling. With exception of the last one, which is very thick membrane PTFE reinforced, and uh, it swells compared to, to other non-reinforced PFSA membrane comparably. Um, Quite good values were recently obtained with, the, with all, of the, all of those membranes because we have work also on the, on the catalyst side, especially on the iridium side. And uh, uh, from this point of view, I would say the performance is more or less meeting the, the set target for the power to gas. Um, there is uh, short uh, about 10,000 hours uh, uh, record of our customer where they recorded the, the data every about one minute. The idle has been, has been filtered so, so you cannot see the typical uh, shutdown curves and, and uh, ramp curves, but uh, these uh, this uh, data has been recorded on the thickest membrane of the 240 microns. The stack was composed of 55 cells of 135 square centimeter active area. Um, basically, what I would like to say as a message for our water electrolysis membrane is following. Uh, we are quite convinced those membranes are suited well the application. However, choice of the membrane depends on many parameters, on the stack structure, on the compression needed, uh, on type of the ceiling and so on. But basically, uh, normal operation has been demonstrated for about 20,000 hours. Unfortunately, the data are not available to us. And uh, we are pretty convinced uh, yet longer durability can be achieved. Recently we are working on, on some accelerated stress protocol that will set proper margin for, 
for the lifetime, so every customer would know exactly what is the capex and what is the opex, and uh, what is the possible revenue from the installation. Uh, next topic, which I would like to briefly talk about, are the membranes for vanadium redox flow batteries. Um, at the beginning, for those who are not really familiar with the technology, vanadium redox flow batteries are, or is typical example of uh, the technology that has enjoyed just limited funding. When you compare it, for example, with the fuel cells, the, the redox flow batteries are funded by a really small fraction of that. Um, the size is modularly scalable and can go up to 10 megawatt, which is the largest known, in, at least to us, largest known installation at, uh, at Hokkaido, uh, made by Sumitomo. Uh, what is interesting point of vanadium redox flow batteries have the by largest efficiency among all uh, energy storage systems because uh, uh, round trip efficiency is above 80%. Um, and uh, one can it couple very easily with wind or solar renewables. Key components are carbon electrode, carbon bipropylates, and membranes. There is no limitation by precious metals. Maybe there could be a question why the, why the application is so interesting and why it was not funded really much. Um, when you look at the, at for example, fuel cell systems, uh, they are. I would use the word sexy because they are small, very effective, there is additional revenue and high power density. So you can get for your money a really compact, reliable system. Vanadium redox flow batteries are a bit smelly, are corrosive and have much lower current densities, but the, the advantage is one kilowatt of rated power cost less than 10% uh, of those from, from fuel cells. And that decides after all. Uh, the principle is quite simple. During the charging, vanadium 4 goes to vanadium 5 and vanadium 2 to vanadium 3. Uh, sorry, vanadium 3 to vanadium 2. Uh, the discharging is the reverse process and the typical OCV you have after the charging is about 1.6 volt. Um, Fumatech is producer of two types of membrane, cation exchange and anion exchange type. Uh, this is basically a big difference when it comes to, to electrolyte crossover, because every membrane has some electrolyte crossover. With the cation one, we experience crossover direction vanadium 5. With anion one, direction vanadium 2. Uh, that is small difference, but important, because uh, it actually when the crossover goes vanadium 2, it uh, reduces the risk of the air contamination. Choice of the membrane depends on, on plenty of parameters. Range of current densities, target efficiencies, uh, easy handling, required mechanical robustness, and so on. Um, the short overview from the membrane is given here, and what I would like you to realize is that there is important parameter, what is the changes of the electrolyte concentration. With the anion exchange type of membrane, there is no changes, and uh, that means that simple rebalancing of the electrolyte from, from uh, cation to anion side secures the same um, capacity of the vanadium redox flow battery. If you go for the, for the uh, cation exchange type of membrane, there are changes of electrolyte. So that means the, the wall battery should be drained and newly mixed. On the other hand, you have relative small volume changes over the, over the individual cycle. Uh, just short example of the of the cycling, this has been recorded with the nine F930 RFD, which is our cation exchange type of membrane. We experience loss about 0.3% per cycle. That means that uh, after about 100 cycles, some rebalancing or reactivation has to be done. Um, thank you for your attention. 
uh, here you can see the, the overview of our membranes. And uh, in case you would like to purchase some, let me know. Uh, let me inform you. We are at the booth um, B61. Thank you for your attention. I'm so sorry. We are running out of time. I might have one minute for one question only. OK, if this is not the case, then I invite you to take the questions to the booth. You have heard the number, D61. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Bernd, uh, excuse me, Thomas Klickpera from the FUMA Tech. Our next talk will be about the deployable non-platinum group metals catalysts in only two minutes.